was your title? Oh, sure. Irish. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, my name is Damien Johnson. I'm with examiner.com. And I'm just wondering, though, know, could you explain how this project became a priority? The steps it took over, let's say, bridges that's crumbling across Missouri and any other things. Why is this one a priority? Certainly. The funding that we received for this project is a federal money that's for congestion mitigation and air quality, mm -hmm. which allows us to work on the signals on, along this corridor. Okay. So these signals, um, basically we put them in a grant. Um, they mm -hmm. are past their lifespan, the signals themselves, and it is at this point that we need to replace the signals in the heart where the controller box that controls them so that they stay current and we can continue to coordinate the signals and the scrap. So this is that type of funding. So this money can only be spent on these signals. Okay, then why just why not just replace the signals as opposed to do the whole project? Well, we certainly have that option. Um, last summer when we uh, were in a conferences, two conferences, uh, one concerning uh, pedestrian safety because St. Louis um, City is has the second highest amount of pedestrian fatalities in okay. the state. Um, and the other one was a high crash location and it kind of gave us tactics on what we can do to decrease the amount of uh, roadway crashes, bicycle crashes, and pedestrian fatalities in the area. So we had this project on the books, uh, several of fire, EMS, police, uh, city, MoDOT, all attended these conferences, and we said we should take a look at these projects and see if there's anything that we can do knowing these new tactics that we can come back and apply to this project. And this was one of those, those tactics to do. So we took it and we were looking at asking the public comments about is this something that you would like? If it's not something you'd like, then we'll go back and put in the signals exactly the way they are today. Okay, and uh, now you have other projects like on, on MoDOC, there's a list of other projects you're proposing that's not on this, but they can go to MoDOC and view other projects. So is it possible that uh, you could only replace the signals as opposed to do the whole street? I heard so. I heard you said, I uh, know on MODOC said this project is set to happen whether we have input or not. So just explain that timeline. Like, let's say people don't want the project. Do you have to go forward with the project or? Is well, we will go forward with the, the project as far as replacing the signals. Replacing whether signal. this, the, the signals get replaced exactly how they are today, okay. we will do that. If we have the opportunity to make some improvements, then we can do that. Um, but if we, if there is no agreement and the alderman cannot, uh, do not pass an ordinance to close the street, then we will continue on replacing the signals exactly the way they are today. Okay. Um, and do you plan on going to neighborhood meetings and like Gravois Park or would you plan on going to neighborhood meetings, Gravois Park or? I know. Gravois Park. I've been to two neighborhood meetings thus far when talking with the older men and women in the area. They, we let them determine how they want to have those neighborhood conversations. Some have invited us to speak at their neighborhood meetings. Some have wanted to, to, to take it on themselves, meet in smaller groups with their neighborhoods. So we really leave it to the aldermen and the women in the neighborhoods to have those, uh, tell us how they want to do it. Now, some of these streets, like, you, we talked about bike trails, like, some of the bike trails you kind of like went back on. I know it's on Chippewa and Merrimack. Mm -hmm. um, explain that one. Why did first it was a two way, both ways, now it's then one way with a bike. We have a bike lane, lane in one direction and shared in the other. Yeah, so uh, what, do, what do you see the future of that street and uh, how come it changed like three times? So it changed twice. Twice. So what we do, and you know, this is not an exact science. So this is this is one of those where you know we're listening to the public once again. Yes. So we heard a lot of comments back that, hey, congestion is just too much. 
we can't, we don't like it, we want to try to find a different solution. So we looked at what we can do, can we get the other lane back in there and still provide some type of bicycle access and with, within the space that we have, you know, that we're bound there on the viaduct by the mm -hmm. railroad tracks on both sides. But we also had a serious pedestrian issue on top where the, the railroad tracks um, installed a fence and blocked off the pedestrian movement for a mile on each side of the track. Right. So we wanted to make sure that we did provide some pedestrian access down in the viaduct to allow pedestrians to cross. So the best solution at this, at this time was to still provide a bike lane in the eastbound direction, but then do a shared bike lane in the westbound direction. And what is the insistence of so many bike lanes as opposed to like on that street, this right here, a shared lane? Um, the, you have to really talk with Great Rivers Greenway. They're they're in charge of that, the Gateway Bike Plan for the St. Louis, St. Louis County. Um, we just we as a partner adhere to the bike plan and and provide those opportunities whenever we have a resurfacing job that we can come through and add those bike lanes in. Okay. Now, in terms of more means like, I mean, would you are you done with the meeting there or? No, I was invited out here to do an interview, so I'll be heading back in there as soon as we're done. Okay, well, that's all. Okay.